this number here, talk about your drug use or health screening, and they'll pay the ticket before you get to treatment. We were seeing a lot of these. Recently, we've, we're now seeing this, which is compressed white powdered fentanyl. Call the number. Fentanyl came on the scene at the same time that decriminalization happened. And then we saw an explosion in public drug use downtown. And uh, unfortunately, that brought other issues into downtown, such as you know, gun violence and uh, other crime. All summer long, we were right out in the open, and, and you didn't have to be paranoid anymore. You didn't have to worry about the cops. And I mean, we were just, you know, it was just like smoking cigarettes. I mean, you know, you just did it and you didn't really worry about it. Well, now, and I knew this was coming, um, they're cracking back down and they're wanting to make it illegal. <laughs> yeah, he was like, oh, you know, 20, or, you know, I asked him how old he was, and he's like, I just do this, it's like. Not really, no. Not no, that's, exactly, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I was like the, the top of the top, the, the, you know, once you do it once or twice or a couple different. I'm surprised it took this long for them to pull that card back. Honestly, um, I don't know why, because it, it really wasn't any different. It really wasn't. I think that they're doing that for the upper class people to make them feel, oh, things are going to get better. It's going to be cleaned up. It's going to whatever. But really, watch as something, the stronger drug gets pushed, flooded out. I have out today, it's got, um, uh, this is what you call cut. And they do that to stretch it out. Nine times out of ten, somebody is, is doing some type of drug. Whether it be having a drink, sliding underneath their seat, slamming a shot of whatever it is, or smoking some, some foil. Whatever their drug of choice is, they're doing it behind closed doors because they have that option. I don't. I'm out here like this, and so I'm in the public eye. I am being seen 24-7. It was all very well intentioned, and the focus was really about trying to help people who are struggling with drug addiction get into treatment and recovery. Unfortunately, the decriminalization piece of it is the piece that hasn't worked particularly well. Um, fewer people are actually um, moving through a process because there isn't that, that pressure, essentially, uh, that, that consequence um, and reward to move people into recovery like we previously had um, with drug courts and other uh, systems that were in place. It wasn't that Ballot Measure 110 solely created the problem with homelessness or addiction or the mental health crisis, but the timing of it and its lack of thoughtfulness about how to help motivate people into treatment and recovery has exacerbated the situation. I'm pretty heartbroken over the changes that they're making. I think they're unnecessary. They are extremely um, harmful and costly, and it's really not going to change what we're the. It's not going to solve the problem they're trying to solve, which is really um, kind of what we're seeing on our streets. The struggling we're seeing on our streets: overdose deaths. Ultimately, the legislature is making a political choice to appease some folks, and it's not actually going to save lives or help people get into services or really other than it's going to create barriers to housing and employment, um, which is what criminal records do. What Measure 110 was about and still is about is 
making sure that we are moving from a criminal justice perspective to a health approach perspective. And that really means at the core that we aren't treating people as criminals and punishing them, but we're treating them as patients and trying to get them care. We want people to seek and get treatment, but if they're not going to seek it, we certainly don't want them on the streets creating uh, chaos to themselves and to the public through uh, the rampant crime that is happening here on our streets. And so, uh, to me, it's important that we get this policy right, and what's currently been proposed just doesn't go far enough. The measure essentially decriminalized hard drugs and has led to uh, a massive increase in opioid deaths, uh, increase in drug use, an increase in open air drug use. And uh, I, I think it also has led to even more homelessness than we had before. I don't want this to be divorced from the other very complicated sort of societal issues that lead to addiction. Um, and I think we conflate those two things at certain times. It is so much more complicated than that. Okay. All along, the legislature had been looking at this ballot measure and sort of making adjustments. But it became very, very obvious that what was happening on the streets of Portland and what was happening on Main Street, Oregon, was unacceptable. And we could not wait any longer to wait for the system to catch up. We needed to do something immediately. This number here, talk about your drug use or health screening, they'll pay the ticket before you get to treatment. We were seeing a lot of these. Recently, we've, we're now seeing this, which is compressed white powdered fentanyl. Call the number. 